And this was clearly a way of showing that Donald Trump controls, I don't know, I guess a one mile square radius of uh, Washington, D.C. Here is uh, that uh, report from Garrett Haig. Within the last 15 minutes, mounted police have been coming down the street. You're going to see them in the frame now using flashbangs in front of them and mounted police to clear what has been an entirely peaceful protest. Not 98 percent, not 99 percent, but 100 percent peaceful protest here today. People throwing, there was no throwing of water bottles, there was no throwing of objects. But a short time ago, mounted police officers have been clearing the street. Tony, if you can pan to the right, I want to show the military police. I want to show the military police on the side of the street. Over the last half hour, we've had military police, we've had Secret Service officers, we've had park police, and now we've had National Guardsmen. Uh, lining the fence. They've been stepping up closer and closer and closer over the last few minutes. You can see them lining the fence just a short time ago. We heard them firing those pepper balls into the crowd here as they've been trying to disperse people. You can see these officers aiming at the protesters who are here in the park uh, as we're being cleared back along the sidewalk here in front of 8th Street. Again, from where I stood, I could see absolutely nothing. Hang on a second here. Ma'am, are you all right? I no, got, she's not fucking all right, man. I got hit bad. All right. I had to pull the mic there, but you could hear her say she got hit bad. Look, Ari, obviously this is an incredibly volatile situation here, and we're going to try to keep our distance from it as best we can. But this is by far the largest law enforcement presence I've seen in this park in the last three days, and by far the most aggressive action I've seen by law enforcement in so this Garrett, park in the last three days. I mean, there you have it. I mean, the, the reporter said a 100%, not 98, not 99, 100% peaceful protest. And they're fired upon with flashbangs and with those pepper pellet guns. Uh, this is what's going down. And, you know, I, I for like me, I don't have a sense of, how this is registering with, you know, the the broad American public. But my sense is there is not the, this is not 1968. There is not a moral majority out there that is so firmly, um, you know, repelled and thinks what's going on is alien. You know, a lot of our population in this country, as opposed to, I think, uh, what it was like in the 60s, frankly. There's a huge percentage of our population who I think have been engaged in some form of protest, right? Some form of marching. You know, even if it's like Earth Day or the environment, I think there's just like broad swaths of the population whose equivalents 50, 60 years ago um, have engaged in some form of civil protest, even if it's not particularly, you know, aggressive, even if it was family friendly, people roll, you know, marching. They have, people have marched for things. And I think they are just more sympathetic to what was, was going on here. I mean, I don't know how Trump thinks that he's going to be able to paint these protests as anything other than being uh, peaceful when that's what they are, primarily. Um, I guess we'll see. But why did the uh, following... So you've got... This is the sequencing here. Trump on the phone, does a little foreign policy, calls Putin, gets some best practices, goes into the Rose Garden... Announces that um, he's going to get, uh, I should say, gets on the phone with the governors, tells them to get tough. You're going to break out your National Guard. You're going to quell these uh, protests. You're going to put people in jail. Then he gets into the uh, Rose Garden, talks about how he'd said that to the governors. Makes me think that audio was leaked by the White House. 
announces that if the governors don't break out the National Guard, he's going to send in the military. That'll be interesting to see what happens when the military tries to cross into the borders, let's say, of New York State, and they're met with National Guardsmen. That'll be an interesting development. And then he uh, simultaneously orders the military police and the D.C. police and Secret Service to clear out a park so that he can go and make this walk to a church. I think it's the uh, St. Joseph's, St. John's Church. And he's holding out a Bible. And we can't see this in the walk, but what's interesting, to the left of where he is, Ivanka is there wearing a mask. She's the only person wearing a mask. And when she's in sight of Trump, she doesn't wear the mask. When she's out of sight from Trump, she wears the mask. It's sort of fascinating, but I don't know if we have a clip of that. But play this. Love it. He's asked, is that your Bible? And he says, it's a Bible. (laughs) Amazing. Uh, uh, Amazing. And then I think he's asked, like, have you read it or something? Can't remember exactly what the next line was. But there's a photo op. I mean, I, 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 I honestly, like, if I could expend a, um, I don't know how much money I would do, but I would love to be able to sort of like be a fly on the wall of, of folks that are ostensibly, this is geared for it, right? I mean, this isn't for us. We can see him, you know, the, the, we, we can hear the explosions in the background. This is strictly for his authoritarian followers. They, I, they must or at least the White House thinks that these people are really going to lap this stuff up. Yeah, we have the sizzle reel that they put together afterwards and put out in the, uh, you know, dictatorial uh, propaganda style, if you want to see that. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at what what they how they thought this was going to read to their people. Okay. Oh, well, that was definitely worth it. We need to have a challenge where people just score that with different kinds of music and sound effects. Mm. (laughs) Him waddling back to the White House. Is can we play that again? That thing yeah. is the first of all, the production value on it sucks, and it really does look like it looks like what it was, which is I'm gonna take a walk, I'm gonna stand in front of a church and pump a Bible and then walk back with a real bunch hasty. Of guys yeah, me. why did they show him like walking to and to there and back? That's I don't just, quite get what this is about. I can walk in the city at daytime still. Love it. Even the movie for me. Not still the holding the Bible. Still got oh, where'd the Bible go? I don't know where it is. I, it I lost the Bible. I lost the Bible halfway through. <laughs> I like he misplaces the, the Bible. Nobody I wonder if like nobody, like if the idea was that he walks alone, like I, I, I wonder if that was like, that, I, mean, I imagine that's all the imaging, right? I mean, that's all there, there, there is, there's some theory behind that. Somebody was like, we need it. You, we need to be able to show that you can walk anywhere in the Capitol as if I, this is. I think it's a statement, again, you know, speaking against uh, him being in the bunker on Sunday. And being a person going across the street, yep. good job. Right. <laughs> That's what it is. It's trying to prove that um, I'm not bunkering anymore. Got to show that I'm willing to get out there and walk. 
the I'm just worried about where that Bible taken. went. I wonder if that is the longest walk he's taken in, in like in, in decades. I almost couldn't make it. <laughs> it, was, it was exhausting. Um, it could have came back too. The New York Times had a garbage headline about yesterday. Something about chaos breaking out and Trump vowing to control it. Here is uh, the uh, Washington Post headline of what we saw yesterday uh, in this whole episode. And it is, um, you know, credit where credit's due. Police gas force out peaceful protesters so Trump can pose for photos at a church. Somebody better be cutting up that video right now and making a lot of funny. Uh, where is we got to get on this immediately. Um, you know what? Let's go to the phones. Uh, I just turned on the phone. I meant to do that earlier. I want to take a couple of calls. We're going to take calls in the, uh, in the fun half as well. Let's, uh, let's just take a look at this as, uh, this is um, from Seattle. There's, there's two shots here that we have of this. This is another example of this. I mean, it's like when Occupy was starting to get rolled up, we know that there was coordination amongst police departments through the Department of Homeland Security, through these fusion centers. And there is a real sense, and I don't know how, uh, if we will find out that there's been some variant of this, but there's a real sense that the police departments, at least themselves, have decided we, this is not about keeping order. This is about establishing what we're willing to do. And here is, watch this overhead shot in Seattle. We then will go to the ground in the next clip here. But watch this because it's uh, pretty shocking. I mean, granted, the protesters are chanting and they're cheering, but they're behind a barricade. And these are trained police officers in full riot gear who are under no threat. But you can't quite tell from this but let's just watch. flashbangs on them into the crowd they throw in these things a rather indiscriminate one. and you can hear them firing now their rubber bullet um Guns. Uh, you know, the protesters are running away. Now it looks like a riot. Yes. Uh, now, let's play the, because the, what happened is the, 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 the commanding officer claimed that they were getting pelted with stuff and they were responding. 
So let's go down to a down on the ground view. 